Hey, Dustin Tibbetts here, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth Managers. Welcome to the Doe Show. We haven't done this one in a while. This is a really sort of in-depth look at some of the concepts about getting your dough straight. Uh, today, we're gonna go over some retirement investing lingo, questions that I get from people all the time, misconceptions and all sorts of ways that we use words wrong. I just wanna sort of highlight these for you. Uh, be sure to check out our other series, we call it Fin Tips, which is a really short series of videos where we just sort of teach you something quick, get right out of the way. Well, today we're gonna spend a little time on the retirement investing lingo. We're investors here at Jazz Wealth. We manage retirement accounts and long-term investment accounts for people. And uh, so I hope you'll check us out at Jazz Wealth. But uh, let's get started here. So there are a lot of terms. Man, they make these terms sort of really complicated and oftentimes uh, they sort of overlap. But uh, there's a few, after all the calls and all the emails that I've answered from people, there's a few that really come up uh, quite often, and so I want to try to highlight them for you today. Let's get started here with um, rollover versus transfer. People call me all the time and say, I'd like to roll over my account to Jazz, or I'd like to transfer my account, and they're sort of not using the terms correctly. So I want to kind of dive in here and see if I can uh, sort of highlight these things with you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and use the board back here, if we can zoom in and check this out. So we've got rollover and transfer. They are different. They are much different. So you want to pay close attention here. A rollover is actually when you are leaving one plan and going to another. So for example, a very common one would be a 401k. You've left your job. You had a 401k at that job. And now you want to roll it over into an IRA. The most common is the traditional IRA, but it could be that you have a Roth 401k. And so if that were the case, if this were the Roth election here, then you would move it into a Roth IRA, right? And so the rollover process means to leave one plan and enter into a new one. If you had a 401k to the IRA, if you had both, maybe you had the Roth 401k, you wanna move them into their own respective accounts and that process is called a rollover. So it is not a transfer. It means that you're leaving one plan and moving to another. Very important that you get these correct because this is, a, is typically a non-taxable. There's no penalties involved here. There's no real issue with the IRS provided that you roll them over correctly, right? So in this case, we're talking about the rollover. Now a transfer is totally different. So in a transfer, you'd just simply be saying, I have a Fidelity account, let's say, right? It could be an IRA, it could be a Roth IRA, whatever the account type is, inside of it here, you've got all your positions, you've got whatever account type it happens to be, and for whatever reason, you've decided, uh, I'd like to move it to another company. I was using Fidelity, and now I'd like to use Schwab, or I'd like to use, well, I'm a little biased, I'd like to use Jazz. And so you're not actually changing the account type in this case, you're changing the custodian, and that's what these are referred to as the custodian. So you would be saying, instead of having my IRA here at Fidelity, I just wanna wipe off Fidelity's name and I wanna move it over to Jazz Wealth or wherever you may happen to do it. That's called a transfer. The account type stays the same. The custodian is what changes there. So very important that you know the difference between a rollover and a transfer, okay? So that's the first one. The second one that I wanna cover is uh, in-service rollover, right? You don't hear this one often, but I get this question a lot. An in-service rollover means that your 401k plan says, even though you still work here at this company, we're going to let you take your money and roll it over to an IRA. It is very rare, right? It does not happen often, but if it happens, you would be asking for an in-service rollover. Sometimes what happens is a company maybe gets bought out. You were working for this company and they get bought by somebody bigger or whatever. And they'll give you the option to obviously continue working for the company, but you're going to then be able to roll over whatever you had into an IRA or Roth IRA, whatever it may be. That's called an in-service rollover. It is still tax and penalty free. It's a window of opportunity to do that. Or in another case, maybe you're working for a company, you're not happy with the 401k, you want to have control over your money, you dig through the paperwork, and you wanna know if you could just take the money and go put it in a different account. You wanna keep your job. 
but you want to move the money away, have more investment options, maybe you like physical real estate, there could be any number of reasons. In that case, you are sifting through the paperwork looking for in-service rollover, okay? So that's that one. Okay, now, uh, the next ones I want to cover here for you, we'll, we'll just cover a few of them and be, be brief with you. You have qualified distributions, and then you have non-qualified distributions, right? Big difference. So these two totally separate on their own. A qualified distribution from your retirement plan, your 401k, I mean, your Roth IRA, IRA, uh, 401k, uh, TSP, whatever it may be, it's a retirement-based account. A qualified distribution is going to mean you have reached retirement age or there's another reason you're able to take the money out. Um, if it's an IRA, it could be for your first time home purchase. If you're a first time home buyer, which really means if you haven't bought a primary residence in the last two years, that could be a qualified distribution. It could be disability. I won't write all these out for you here. I'm just happy to be writing on the board again. Uh, it could be disability. It could be medical expenses, uh, college expenses. There's a number of reasons that you may be able to take a qualified distribution from your IRA. TSP, 401k, whatever it may be. And in that case, you may still owe the taxes, of course, depending on the account type, but you may be able to forego the penalty if you are not of retirement age. There's a few exceptions there. A non-qualified distribution is a whole different animal. This is where you're taking money out early. You are not retired yet. You are not of, let's say, the 59 and a half age that IRAs require you to be, Roth IRAs require you to be. And because of that, uh, maybe you had an emergency, uh, something happened, you lost your job and you've exhausted all your resources. So you're taking money out of the uh, uh, Roth IRA or IRA, let's say. Well, that would be a non-qualified distribution, right? For whatever reason, if you're taking money out of those plans, that is a non-qualified distribution and it will be sort of uh, categorized as such on your tax return. You would need to account for the penalties uh, assigned depending on the account type and of course uh, any taxes that are owed. So very, very, very important you understand the difference between the two uh, because you may be thinking, hey, I'm just taking some money out. It's my Roth IRA. Well, technically it's, you know, if you're before retirement age or you do not have an exception to the rule to be able to take money out, uh, well, then that's a non-qualified distribution. So now you know the answer or you know those uh, terms. Uh, the last term I'm going to give you, and this one comes up a lot, is volatility. You're going to hear more about this in the markets because the markets are getting more and more volatile. Um, as the markets wiggle back and forth, that's called volatility. I actually just want to show you real quick. We'll just do a real quick uh, example here. In the long run, you may be investing and your account will look something like this, right? Moments of great growth, moments of sidewaysness, uh, sidewaysness. <laughs> but overall, you're going to have this sort of steady move higher, provided that you're invested correctly, you're doing the right thing there. It, the markets generally have a trend higher over the long run, right? In the short term, anything's possible. Now, with you seeing returns in this case, um, volatility is simply the fluctuation in your account balance day by day, or at least how I'm referring to volatility today. So while at the end of every day, we look back and we see, okay, we got a nice, you know, sort of nice change there. Throughout the day or day by day, volatility is the level of fluctuation you have to see or lack of it to generate the returns that you're generating it, right? And think about it this way. Uh, you have an account that has $10,000 in it. And one day it's got 10,000 in it. The next day it's got 10,500 or throughout the day it spikes to 10,500. That's a pretty significant spike. But let's just for simple sake here, let's say that. Then the next day you're down to 9,500. The next day you're back to 10,000 again. The next day you're down to 9,000. Overall, you're doing just fine. But that sort of volatility that you have to witness along the way that's what we're referring to in this case. So volatility can be a good thing, um, but of course we all want to invest in the least volatile way to get to our goal. So we want to see as little volatility as possible. That is what volatility is, at least in this uh, discussion here. So let me zoom back out. Sorry about that. Um, and so that's what we're referring to. The, the sort of fluctuation in your accounts over time 
for the expected or the generated return that we're talking about. So uh, I hope that was helpful. A little bit longer of a video today just to kind of highlight some of the different terms. There are so many different terms that we could cover and have covered in the past. Uh, if we helped you in some way, maybe you'll hit the subscribe button or check us out here at Jazz Wealth. We manage our own funds, by the way, so we control the volatility of people's accounts. Whereas most financial advisors, they just buy a mutual fund and hope for the best. Not that they're doing wrong by you, but they hope for the best. We actually control the funds here ourselves, something that we are uh, much different than everybody else in doing, and I hope you'll check that out. Well, um, yeah, that's all I have for you. Enjoy, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Hey, wait, before you go watch one of our other great videos, have you had a chance to see our new FinTips video? They focus on one topic at a time, covering investing, personal finance, and anything that can quickly help you with your dough. Best of all, we'll keep it real short, because we know time is money. Why should you choose Jazz Wealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interests comes before ours.